Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to make a quick and easy coffee themed card using the latest box of the month kit from Not Too Shabby. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Like I mentioned in the intro, I'm gonna be using some not too shabby goodies from their May box of the month kit. It was coffee and friends, and it did sell out super quickly, but you still can get some of the elements in the kit. So that's what I'm gonna to use today to create a quick and easy card. I will have links in the description box below to the Not Too Shabby products, and there is also a 10% discount code that you can use and save a little bit while you're there. From the kit, I will be using the Coffee and Friends 6x6 paper pad, and I pre-chose this coffee cup background, the brown paper that matches that, and the blue and white polka dot paper. For my stamp set, I'll be using the I Heart coffee set, and I'll let you in on a little secret. I myself don't heart coffee at all, but I do have lots of friends and family members who do, so I know this set will still come in very handy. Out of my own stash, I got a top fold card base, a scrap of white cardstock, and a piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth to stamp my image on. I will be coloring my image with some Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers, and I will have these listed in that description box below if you want to check them out. Oh, I almost forgot. I did already mention that this kit sold out super fast, and I just received the kit for June, and let me tell you, it is so cute. So you might wanna go ahead and get signed up so you can guarantee yourself one of those kits. They go on sale on June 1st. Once I start the process, I will go to a voiceover and I'll let you know if I add any more tools or products. If I do leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. Before we get to that process, I have a channel member shout out. I would like to give a great big thank you and welcome to our latest paper trimmer level member, Pam Palkey. Thank you so much, Pam, for your support. To get started on today's card, I did the stamping first, and because I'm going to be using those Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers, I will be using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth and stamping with VersaFine Onyx Black. I set up my stamps on the piece of paper, and then after I lifted them up with the door of the Misty, because I did not want the little steam lines to stamp out, I covered those up with a little piece of scotch tape. Once I had inked the stamps up, I just removed that tape and threw it away. And then you'll see that when I do the stamping, that the steam marks don't show up. Now, because the cardstock does have a little texture, I wanted it a little darker. So I probably shouldn't have thrown that tape away, but what I did was just tore a post-it note in half, covered up those same lines and re-inked it and stamped it again. And this time it was nice and crisp and black. Now, normally at this point, I would color these and fussy cut them out, but because I just got a new toy, I am going to let that do the cutting for me. I received my brother Scan and Cut SDX125 earlier this week, and today I pulled it out of the box and used it for the first time. And let me tell you, so far, I think it's going to be worth every cent that I saved up and spent on it. I'll be talking about this a little bit more though later on. Once my cups were cut out, which it worked like a charm, it was time to do the coloring. 
I will be using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens, and I got out a scrap of white cardstock there on the right, and I am protecting my work surface with a clear cutting mat from the Dollar Tree. Now when I do my cutting, it is very simple. I try to use just one color per section and then blend that out to get some shading. While I finish coloring, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with a QOTV or the question of the video. And it just so happens that today's question, which was submitted by a channel member, has to do with die cutting, which is kind of fortunate since I want to talk a little bit more about my brother scan and cut. Sherry P would like to know, which do you prefer, die cutting or fussy cutting? Let me know in the description box below and make sure that if you answer the question, you add the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. For myself, I definitely prefer die cutting. I know some of you find fussy cutting very relaxing and you might do it while you're watching TV, but I try to keep that as a last resort. Now my pocketbook doesn't necessarily like die cutting when it comes to having to buy matching dies for every stamp set. And that is actually why I invested in the Brother Scan and Cut. I had been thinking about it off and on for years. And finally over the weekend, I watched some more YouTube videos and I hit buy in that online cart. It came earlier this week and this morning I opened it and I tested it out and I had a successfully cut stamp in under 10 minutes from the time that I sliced open my box. So those videos that I found online definitely help and I can see this really being a useful tool that will hopefully pay for itself in no time. If you already own one of these, I would love any tips and tricks you have to give me so you can leave those in the comment section as well. And also let me know, do you ever color those stamped images first? Everything I saw said to cut before you color, but it's kind of tricky to hold on to these little images while you're coloring. I can't wait to hear from you. I knew that I wanted my focal point to be a circle and I wanted the sentiment that I choose to fit nicely onto it. So I got out a set of my stitched nesting circles and I played around a little bit with the placement of the sentiment as well as the two cups until I had one that I thought would look nice. I did end up going with the smaller circle and I took that off camera to use my cuddle bug to die cut it. Once again, I pulled out my Misty in case I would need to stamp my sentiment twice, and I quickly got that set up on the circle, inked up, and stamped. Next, I brought in my paper trimmer so I could cut down those pattern papers. The coffee cup will be my background, and I cut that to fill the card front at four and a quarter by five and a half, and the polka dot piece, got cut to three and a quarter by four and a half and then I cut the brown mat slightly larger. Here on screen now are the measurements for each if you're interested in jotting these down or trying to remember them. Now that all of my pieces were ready I could start putting the card together. I adhered all of the pattern papers flat down to the card front just centering them each on the piece below it and then I played around a little bit with my focal point. I really liked the layout when I had the circle hanging off the right edge of the matted polka dot piece. I thought it added a little bit of motion to the card, so I adhered that flat down. And then for a little bit more dimension on the card, since it was really flat so far, I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the 3 quarter inch width, and I added a piece to the back of each cup. Once that was there, I just pulled that release paper and I adhered my cards to the circle. To finish the card off and to give it a little bit more embellishing, I pulled in three different colors of enamel dots and I added those to the left side of the circle. And here's a look at the finished card.
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.